What's up everyone, welcome back to After the Storm. This is the Canes game review for game number 65 of the season, a huge 7-2 victory over the St. Louis Blues. Introing this game, backup Auntie Ranta Ronta comes into the net. He had an excellent game in this one and a very strong goaltender at the other end for St. Louis, who's been talked about this season as a potential Jordan Bennington replacement, Philly Huso in between the pipes for the Blues. And other than that, it's the same lineup as the Dallas game, which was very disappointing. So let's see how this team, you know, goes ahead with this one. Early on in the first period, Kane's getting into some penalty trouble. Svechnikov with a holding penalty early on, sending St. Louis to their first power play. But on this penalty kill, Martin Nietzsche just driving wide, fires a wrister on net. It hits former Carolina Hurricane Justin Falk in the knee, goes, you know, past Billy Huso's blocker and into the net. Kane's with an early 1 0 lead on another shorthanded goal, and the Kane's would kill this penalty off. And Jesperi Kakiniemi, who was all over the the, the stat sheet in this one for penalties uh, takes a holding penalty here. St. Louis to their second power play very early on in the game. And on this penalty kill, Antti Ranta coming up huge, makes a big stop on Ryan O'Reilly. Carolina kills off this one. Ronta with an excellent period, and that would pretty much do it for the first, just a lone shorthanded goal, a couple of penalty kills. We go to the first intermission, Carolina leading 1-0. And in the second period, the floodgates open up early. Jarvis with a nice, honestly, one of the nicest goals uh, of the season for Carolina. Picks it up on his off wing, off of the boards. Uh, picks it up on his backhand, quickly drives it over to his forehand and flips it past Billy Husso under the bar, sort of under the arm, under the bar, uh, past Husso, and it's 2-0 Carolina. And very shortly later, uh, a nice feed from Max Domi, a small little pass, but a, a crucial one here. His first point is a Carolina Hurricane as he feeds the puck to Brett Pesci in the slot, who is loving shooting the puck from this spot. Pesci curls and drags and rips it underneath the bar. It's 3-0 Carolina. And then some rough stuff starts happening. Uh, Alexei Toropchenko, uh, number 65 on St. Louis, comes across with a hit. I didn't think the hit was actually that bad on Stepan. Stepan a little bit hurt after the play. But at the other side, something clearly said. Uh, yes, Mary Kotkaniemi comes over, drops the gloves with Toropchenko. Fight kind of goes more or less to KK on this one. Uh, Toropchenko really didn't throw much of a, any punches or anything like that. It wasn't a very even fight, but it wasn't like a dominating fight. And on the play, an instigator, so a 10, 5, and an additional 2 to Kotkaniemi. He's off for 17 minutes. Domi to serve the penalty, and St. Louis back to the power play, their third of the game. Carolina kills this one off as well. Naho afterwards takes a hooking penalty. St. Louis to their fourth power play. Carolina yet to have one. But on this power play for St. Louis, Cairo uh, with a holding call on uh, Tavo Teravainen in the neutral zone. A, a, probably not a good penalty to take here if you're Jordan Cairo. Uh, so we head to some four on four. And St. Louis gets on the board here. A nice pass. Nick Letty using his speed down the wing. Uh, this is exactly Nick Letty's game. And I think he's getting activated in St. Louis a lot more than he was in Detroit, mostly because of the, you know, people around him the players around him are a lot better here uh, he comes down the left wing you know kind of turns his body shifts gets a nice saucer pass over to Pavel Buchnevich and on the backhand he gets it past Antti Ranta it's 3-1 so Carolina ends up with an abbreviated power play after the Cairo penalty and on this power play the short one I think it was only about a minute minute 10 uh, a nice passing play, couple back drop passes, D'Angelo, and then Aho finds Svechnikov across the ice with a nice pass, and Svechnikov makes no mistake about this one. It's 4-1 Carolina, and that's how the second period would end. Carolina with a huge 4-1 lead heading into the third. And in the third period, early on, uh, 
Ronta robs Buchnevich on a two-on-one with Tarasenko. An excellent stop for Antti Ronta, who I thought had an excellent game in this one. And Ronta would make a few more extra big saves uh, in, in, to you know keep Carolinas at a 4-1 lead here. St. Louis was surging to start this period. Ian Cole goes off for tripping St. Louis to their fifth power play of the game. And on this one, Buchnevich does get a puck through Ronta. Uh, an unfortunate one, obviously one he'd probably sort of hope to want to have back, I'm sure, but he played so well, and it, it I mean, this goal at this point is worrying. It's 4-2, you know, a, a 4-1 leads do evaporate from time to time, but Carolina would stick pretty tough through the rest of this game. D'Angelo and Stahl on a three-on-one play. Uh, Stahl, uh, D'Angelo passes to Stahl, Stahl back to D'Angelo. He rips it off the post, and Vili Husso heads to the bench, down 4-2 with 5.30 left. Uh, the Canes broadcast was given a lot of praise to Craig Berube for pulling his goalie this early. I'm not sure if it was a great idea per se, but uh, he obviously was not giving up on the game at 4-2. But about a minute afterwards, Svechnikov gets, you know, breaks away free, and uh, Justin Falk not uh, good enough with his stick on this play. Svechnikov just buries the empty netter from, from the neutral zone, and it's 5-2. Husso heads back to the bench with about four and a half minutes to go in the third. But again, Carolina, excellent. You know, Nita Ryder uh, finds his way through, goes down and buries an empty netter himself. It is now 6-2. And St. Louis's last big chance of the game would come Pavel Buchnevich, you know, uh, a cross-crease pass, and he rips one off the post. Looked like Ronta might have had it, but it actually is off the post. And then late in the third, an Ian Cole point shot looks like it just finds its way through traffic and past Vili Husso, 7-2 here. And that's how the game would end here, 7-2, a, a huge win, a complete 60-minute effort, which is something we've been asking for, I think, more often right now from the Canes. But an excellent game nonetheless. Uh, so many players were firing uh, as we get into the player analysis section here, I'll, I'll talk about that as well. I just didn't think anybody had a bad game. So player analysis started off with a good. Uh, Auntie Ronta, uh, how much more can you ask from this guy? He has been maybe the best backup in the NHL this season. I mean, Vili Huso at the other end has arguably uh, had to come in as the starter for some nights for St. Louis. But Ronta is undoubtedly the backup in Carolina, and he has come in and been excellent. That's Svechnikov after uh, a you know a, a penalty early in the first on his birthday. He gets two goals in this game. He gets a power play marker to make it four two or four one at the time, and then gets the empty netter as well. Uh, so happy birthday to Svech! And uh, he had an excellent game in this one. He was all over the place, generating a lot of chances and. Uh, a game that could have went pretty sideways early on doesn't because he finds a way to change his game up. And Martin Nietzsche, uh, I think this is the first time Nietzsche is in the good category for in a long time. Um, he has been really fighting himself, really fighting the puck, fighting him. <laughs> you know, he scored that goal a while back and he you know took the monkey off his back. But in this one, it was uh, he was excellent. He gets the shorthanded goal. He was all over the ice in this one, too. Uh, one of the Canes' best players, most noticeable players. And average for this game, I didn't really have anybody. Like, I thought everybody had a good game. I didn't notice any players who really came out and had a flat game uh, or were making bad turnovers, bad reads, none of that stuff. So uh, nobody in the average column, nobody in the bad column. And for a Blues player to highlight in this one, we're going to go with Pavel Buchnevich. Um, this guy has been excellent for the Blues all season. He's got 55 points in 50 games, I believe, this se or 50 points in 55 games this season for St. Louis, coming over in a trade last offseason, which was a strange one from New York for Sammy Blay. In hindsight, maybe a bad move from Chris Drury and the Rangers to give up Buchnevich like this. Uh, also, on that second goal he scored of the game, uh, that's his 100th career goal, so nobody really mentioned that. Maybe the Blues broadcast did. Didn't see anybody grab a puck or anything like that. Uh, but that is his 100th career uh, NHL goal. And uh, he was the, the most noticeable blue in this one. He was excellent, and his, he wanted to rip that puck to the top shelf every time he had it. Uh, he put a couple in the net in this one. He was their best player by far. 
So anyways, guys, that wraps up this edition of the Canes Game Review. Thank you so much for watching. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, yeah, catch you guys on the next one Monday night against, I want to say it's Washington we're playing, playing the Caps. Yes, Monday, Tuesday, back-to-backs against Washington and Tampa Bay. So again, thank you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.